Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Okay, let me see who's here. Oh, let me see what happened here. Oh, I got to turn this volume down. There we go before we get an echo. Okay. And okay, another 140 subscribers since yesterday. That's good. At least we're trending upward, right? And as always, let me close a couple of things before that becomes a problem. All right. Um, oh, and by the way, MR, thank you for the cash app. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm scrolling all the way to the top just to make sure I don't miss anything. Kathy G was here first. Thank you very much for that. Um, haven't had any trolls lately. That's a good thing. Speaking of which, I didn't put the troll spray on. Oh, my goodness. Let me put on the troll spray. Otherwise, I may have spoken too soon. Let me put the troll spray on. Uh, okay. Troll spray, troll spray. Let's go back a week. Okay. Troll spray engaged. How did I almost forget that? All right. Very good. Vundava. Okay. Troll spray engaged. So we won't have to deal with those uh those uh trolls. All right. Ready for action. I don't think we'll be on more than an hour tonight. At least that's my hope. Oh, and by the way, you guys, I was sequestered yesterday to appear in Spaces on Twitter or the social media app formerly known as Twitter. And I was on there, well, not long. I mean, by my standards, it was not that long, just about six or seven hours. Now, what in the world did I talk about for six or seven hours? But you know me, if there's a captive audience, I'm in it. Okay, so anyway, hello to everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, moderators. I'll take a look and see who's here as I go along. Just making sure I didn't miss any super chats or super stickers. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay. And anyway, so the, the countdown, the countdown for the um, the visit to New York City, which will be on the tenth. I am excited. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Let me move on. 42,000 subscribers as of yesterday, or 42,140 right now. Okay, there we go. That was the first trip to New York. That was like the big reset. You probably remember this from the United Nations. Um, okay. Um Okay. And if you recall this, this kind of reminds me of like one of those spy movies or something. Or also with those sunglasses, you can kind of say that the Duchess of Sussex was giving you just a little bit of breakfast at Tiffany's. Kind of remind me of the eyewear from uh, the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> and of course there's Archie's papa kind of looking like he's on a mission. I mean, they do kind of give you that, um, secret agent, uh, 007 spy energy, but instead it's just a very modern 
hardworking couple uh, on their way to handle their business in New York City. Um, oh, am I going to New York? <laughs> you know, I have those, uh, one of the, I don't, I forgot who sent me the gift. Was it, uh, I think it was Lydia, right? That sent me the little miniature folding chairs so I can always have some security in my pocket. I literally have one sitting here on my desk right now. One of those little miniature folding chairs. It Every time I look at it, I just, I feel very good. I feel like empowered. Yes, it's very empowering. And um, yeah, so... If I did go to New York, I'd have to keep one of these in each pocket, you know, just in case there's the need for a double barrel defense. But, uh, yeah, you got to take your folding chair. It's kind of hard to get them on the plane. <laughs> but they are nice to have. Yeah, don't leave home without it. Got to have one like in the passenger seat. Or keep one in the trunk at all times, just in case. All right, so let's move on to this one. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, let me go ahead because I, um, let me see, is this the video? Yes, just to reminisce a bit. Now, let me set it up for you. Do you remember Central Park? Of course you remember Central Park, right? Well, here goes, here goes. Um, I just went through my... Um, my, uh, what do you call it, <clears throat> my PC, and I wanted to find something for New York. So here goes.
Bye guys. Bye New York. <laughs> Hello LA. <laughs>
uh, uh, Baron people were just happy to see the Sussexes. You could see it on their face. Love it. Yes, me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> especially the two lady security guards. That's That was like my favorite part. Uh, let me see here. I see people are starting to wear uh, their mask again. Um, glad to see. Well, uh, well, just so you know, this was from, what, 2021, right? So, of course, um, a lot of people here are wearing masks, but I still wear my mask in public spaces. I do. Grocery store, uh, wherever. I wear my mask. Don't want to, uh, I don't think I had it, and I don't want it. Okay. Just looking at some of the comments. Oh, yeah, Rohini, how are you? You had that incident yesterday. I hope you're okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, Yulibi says, look at the way Harry makes sure she is okay going down the stairs. Not like the other royals. True that, true that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm on Royal Sussex. It's fair. Oh, yeah, at the very beginning. That is true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, so I'm scrolling back the other direction. Let me get right again. And go back the other way. Hello, Reba Henderson. Praying to keep up. She does not have either. Okay, let me see. Oh, is Elaine Parker here? Hey, Elaine Parker. Thank you so much for being here. I think it's like 4 a.m. there, right? Let's see. And Lottie says, Baron, on Tuesday, the excitement may be greater uh, than before. Yeah, I think so. I mean, everybody is like super psyched out about it. So, so am I. Elaine Parker, thank you for the super sticker. And as always, thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Thank you for getting up bright and early today. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> this outfit right here, remember that is from that sustainable company. I forget the name of it. Um but love that. Okay, today, Carson Day, today's that is Carson Daly to moderate panel with uh, Meghan Marco and Prince Harry for World Mental Health today. So let us not lose sight of the fact that this is for World Mental Health Day. This is not just um, so that we can see our faves out and about. There is a um, a, 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 a um, what do you call it a philanthropic or humanitarian component to this. So whilst we're getting excited, <laughs> as well as we should be, let us not lose sight of that, that this is um, for a very important uh, thing that's going to help a lot of people. And of course, the Sussexes, they are, their focus is going to be on some of the young people who have, um, or actually the families of the young people who have unalived themselves because of uh, social media. So there's that to consider. So while we're getting excited and, you know, perfectly well, we should, but we have to remember what the mission is about. So um, that being said, <laughs> There goes that laugh. You know I'm excited. Okay, so it says uh, Prince Harry and the, you know, the wording of this is weird. Prince Harry and the former Meghan Markle. This is the Today Show, so a little shade. I'm just like, I had to look at that several times earlier. And the former, former Meghan Markle are teaming up with today's Carson Daly this week, in the name of mental health, the Today Show co-host will moderate a panel that includes Harry and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Oh, now they say in Duchess of Sussex. I just never heard that before, the former. Uh, as well as the Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, 
uh, for the Archwell Foundation Parents Summit. The panel is part of a festival hosted by Project Healthy Minds for World Mental Health Day on October the 10th in New York City. The Parents Summit will focus on building community and creating positive change for a safer online world for young people, according to an Instagram post about the event. For Mental Health Awareness Month in May, Harry and Megan visited a youth group, AHA. Well, we've talked about that before. That was uh, where they were sitting around in the circle and both Harry and Megan were wearing black on the occasion. Um, I shared that with you all before, but um, yeah, so that is also happening. So very, very cool. All right, uh, let me continue then. And got it, got it, got it, got it. And there we go. Uh, so right here, oh, let's see. Joyce Yvette Davis says, Harry and Megan looks uh, good together. It's amazing when you compare them to Willie, Willie and Catherine. It looks so awkward as a couple and don't look like they even like each other. Yeah, I think that that connection between the two of them evaporated a long, long, long time ago. And traveling solo is just another symptom, which ironically, there has been a couple of stories about where they were saying that people are advising them, don't do this that they need to be seen in public together more often if they uh, want to suppress those rumors about um, a failing relationship. So that is also at play. It seems like they don't want to be together, but people are telling them uh, you better do your performance and, and because it, it would be bad for everybody involved in the institution if people lost uh, confidence in their relationship. Not that I'm trying to help them, but it is. It, I'm not telling them anything they don't know. It is a bad look. So thank you so much for that, Joyce. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Okay. Uh, so anyway, it says here, the Duchess of Sussex, uh, yeah, the Duchess of Sussex, and yep, that's me. How did, did I end up in this situation? Here comes the story. By uh, some sheer luck, and thanks to JC, who spotted her, I found myself on her path. And the thing is, uh, she stopped and took uh, some time to speak with me. What you see here, what uh, Misan Harriman perfectly captured, is the embodiment of mutual gratitude, empathy, and respect. Merci! That's uh, what uh, she said to me when she knew we were French. Merci! Merci vous! Uh, what is that? Mer merci, merci vous! <laughs> is, what I uh, uh, is what I replied. And then it says, there's also one thing that I truly love in this photo. In the background, JC, I'm sorry, JP and JC, my very dear friends and brothers, uh, were there grinning, enjoying this moment. And I love it That's that they were there with me, looking after me in some way as they did uh, during the Invictus and keep doing now. Big love to you, uh, to my JJ. I wonder if that's JJ Chalmer. Oh uh, no, no, JJ Chalmer. He's he's the TV guy. He's a friend of Harry, but he's from the UK. And she said she's French, so maybe it's a different JJ. But anyway, I see now. Yeah, that's not her, that's not JJ Chalmer. Or uh, is it Chalmer? That's uh, two other people there. But yeah, very cool photo. Alma Andrews, thank you for the super sticker, and thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Yeah, 
I can see everybody's in a very good mood. Uh, okay. And let's take a look here. Okay. Becoming obvious. Yes, it is becoming obvious. Okay, on to the next. Um, oh, and of course, this photo is another Misan Harriman. That is President Steinmeier and the other guy. I forget who he is, but uh, there's actually a set of, there was a set of four photos, but I only um, found two out of the four. There's that one, and then there's this one. Um, backstage, uh, you can see um, Steinmeier there on the right, and the other guy on the left, I forget who that is, and there is the Sussexes in the very center. You know, with the black and white photo and in this lighting, I tell you, the Sussexes look very fit and, and, and lean and ready to work. They look very fit and lean in this light. And I love that the Duchess of Sussex likes to um, uh, have the bare shoulders. It is a uh, great asset for her, so why not? Why not bear it? Bare shoulders. It looks good on her. Okay, and then Yulia, or Tara, Yulia Paevsky, uh, Paevska, or Tyra, as um, she prefers to be called, her alter ego. Finally, I'm back in Ukraine. The Invictus Games wrapped up a month ago, but I had to stay in Germany for spinal surgery. Everything went well, and I won't be needing crutches anymore. Yay! Although there are still three months of quite strict movement, and lifestyle restrictions ahead. So I, well, all of us saw um, uh, Yulia, or Tyra, that is, walking around with crutches, and she alternated from the crutches to the wheelchair and back to the crutches again. I could only imagine that whatever pain and suffering that she was going through had something to do when she was in the custody of the Russian forces because it was said that she was beaten and tortured every day while she was in captivity and that they were trying to uh, take away her reason to live. And somehow she survived. And if you remember, uh, she was in such bad shape that her daughter didn't even recognize her. Um, she was very skinny and, of course, everything else that was going on. But fortunately, she's here. She was able to compete, and now she just had her back surgery. So I hope and pray that she's on the mend, and I'm pretty sure that you all do too. Uh, Sarah Turner, 12 months, 12 months membership, a whole year. Thank you so much for that, and thank you. <laughs> for watching Royal Sussex. Happy Friday night or Monday morning to you. <laughs> uh, I've, you know, the last time we saw her, I kind of think that, that she knows that we know that she know that that's probably not a good idea for her. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I saw that last time, and I'm just like, uh, you notice it doesn't happen much these days, right? <laughs> but I agree with you. We don't want to give them any ideas. Okay. And uh, congratulations to Simone Biles. We're running out of words, so uh, we'll just let the stats speak for themselves. Six-time world floor champion, undefeated on um, FX, and 23 times world champion, 
23 and 37 total world and Olympic medals and five total uh, world medals in 2023. And then lastly, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. And uh, at one point, it is said that Simone Biles uh, once said, I am, I am not the next Usain Boats or Michael Phelps. I am the first Simone Biles. Now, you have to be careful with that because sometimes you'll find that someone has been quoted for something that they've never said. So I'm assuming that sounds like it's her, but, you know, you have to be kind of careful. Uh, I love this photo right here. I love this photo. And one thing I've noticed, too, is that there is a like a bank of cameras around her. I mean, there's a camera facing her. I can't help but think she's completely surrounded by cameras. And as you all remember, she had to take some time away for her mental health. She needed to protect her mental health. But it looks like she's in a good place right now. So in spite of the paps and everything, it looks like she's fine. So that's a good thing. Whatever she uh, was doing to turn around, you know, the whatever was going on, it seems to be working. You can tell in her performance. You can tell in her smile. Uh, she's married to an action figure. Um, yeah, so I, I think she's in a good place, and I'm glad for her. All right, so let's go to the shade room, shall we? To the shade room. Um, Ariana fiance, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We ain't talking about that. Uh, Will's Middle East piece is here, uh, uh, my life mission. Yeah, Middle East piece is my life mission. That's what William said. His life mission is peace in the Middle East, something that has eluded this world ever since, what, 1947 or 67 or whenever it was they had the uh, the war, uh, the Six-Day War. And still, uh, William believes that he will be the one in his lifetime that is going to bring peace to the Middle East. What a lofty ambition uh, for someone so uh, ill-suited and unfit for purpose. But that is what he said, that that is his life's mission. I would be impressed to know exactly what he's done since that brief was uh, released by Kensington Palace. All the caucasity of it all, the caucasity. Uh, William is going to bring peace to the Middle East. It says here, Prince William pledges to make peace in the Middle East, his lifelong project after historic five-day trip to the region. Uh, oh, yes, I do remember when he went over there because he went to visit um, the tomb or the sarcophagus of his um, great-grandmother, Princess Alice of Greece, of Denmark and Greece. So I do remember that. And other than that, I have no recollections about him being in the Middle East. But I cannot believe he said that in 2018. So let's think about this. What was going on in July of 2018? Oh, I remember Harry and Meghan had just gotten married, right? They got married in April? No, May. They got married in April. So by July of 2018, with all of the attention that was being pulled toward the um, gravitational pull of Harry and Meghan, he decided to come up with some lofty ambition like peace in the Middle East. You can almost dissect these things in an instant. Okay. Now, uh, right here, you can see William 
I'll end homelessness. Let us not forget that he, did he pledge? And it was a pledge, right? Did he pledge $3 million to end homelessness? And then not long after that, he went to that Pret sandwich shop. But um, that's another one of his goals is to end homelessness. And then over here, we can remember he really uh, was born with a silver foot in his mouth. He said Britons were more used to seeing conflict in Africa and Asia. It's very alien to see this in Europe. We were all, I'm sorry, we are all behind you, he said. But he added that he, like many, wanted to do more to help. We feel so useless, he said. He wanted to do more to help. But we feel so useless, he said. Uh, Judy Matasset says William will soon, as he grow <laughs> a full head of hair. Yes, I I think it would be easier for him to thread a needle with a camel or to grow his hair back than to bring peace to the Middle East, which is a real shame what's happening over there. But I tell you, I I need to stop looking at it, but I'm just fascinated. I never thought anything like that would happen. Gosh, I never thought anything like that was happening. It's it's hard to watch. It really is. But yes, thank you so much, Judy. And thank you for being a member and watching Royal Sussex. Okay. Uh, what am I going to do here? Oh, I know. I know. I mean... I know I don't really have to, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway, just to say I did, just to be shady. Just to be shady. Here goes. I'm sorry we can only come and give words and comfort, but we're, we are thinking about you the whole time and we really care about what's going on. So Sometimes it's got more than financial. Yeah. Well, if we can give you a little smile here and there, that's important. So, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry we can only come and give words and comfort, but we're, we are thinking about you the whole time and we really care about what's going on. So Sometimes it's got more than financial. Yeah. Well, if we can give you a little smile here and there, that's important. So, you know. Real family, and if not, how was it like having them there in the building? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? <laughs> the Prince and Princess of Wales. Oh, no, I did not. I'm only familiar with one royal family. I don't know too much about that one. Thank you. Okay. So, our patron saint of lofty ambitions, William, um, who doesn't seem to know much about geography or world history, really put his foot in at that time. Now, um, I don't know if I shared this with you yesterday or was it the day before, but I certainly meant to share it with you. This um, post right here, ostentiously, um, inequality is part of the UK identity. We subsidize royal billionaires at a time of gross inequity and cost of living crisis. They believe themselves to be the deserving rich and superior born to rule. We pay for their lifestyle from birth to death. And at the bottom it says the queen is dead Harry and Meghan left the royal family to save their lives. The leftovers in that family are racist, cold-blooded grifters, not worth keeping. Again, abolish the monarchy. It's evidence that there is a sentiment that is growing. Um, and I see more and more of this on social media. And not everybody, of course, is a squatty that is saying these things and they are doing absolutely nothing to persuade people that they're getting value for money. And that's that's what I, I was trying to say with the thing yesterday and the day before. 
I just don't know how people justify this. So on the uh, spaces last night, uh, someone was trying to point out to me that this family is part of the national identity. And there's just absolutely no room to imagine life without them. And I get that. I, I really do get it. But, you know, as an American, is is so I'm I'm just used to every four years we either keep or we dump the leader. And then after eight years, then they're gone for good. And then we bring in the next. That's the system I know. But yeah, I get the, the national identity part. And yeah, that's that's all I can say is I get it. I don't endorse that system, especially uh, with the likes of these people. <laughs> and considering how cruel that they are, but if that's somebody else's kink, uh, so be it. So that's it. I, I just wanted to share that with you. But I was like, wow, that is like a punch in the gut right there. So we spoke about the Yacht Girl yesterday. And I told you that that one, the Yacht Girl thing really upset me because they keep saying it and they keep trying to make it believed and make it true. Um, And there's like plenty evidence that it's the other way around. So I went digging through my um, files and I found this. Unlike the other women, Meghan Markle, uh, let me see. I, Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales prior to marriage was confident, self-made, meeting world leaders and doing impactful charity work prior <laughs> to getting married. It's quite obvious why I uh, why I'm considered to be a better royal. So that was a bit of sarcasm, or as they like to say, just a bit of cheek. But it does make the startling comparison between the pre-royal life. And mind you, yes, um, Megan came into the family at what age? Um, let me see, how old was it, Megan? Thirty-seven. Or had she just turned 37? And Kate came into the family, what, age 30? So there was a little bit of a head start. But she certainly wasn't a kid. She certainly wasn't a kid. And there has been this very unfair um, portrayal that they're trying to perpetuate of Megan uh, having loose morals and lacking ambition in life. And and they tr they're trying to convince people that Megan's life started when she married into the royal family, that she just didn't have anything going for her. Um, the insults about her being the B-rated actress and um, let's see, what's the other insult? Well, anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, so I I have, um, like I said, I've, I've been very bothered by it. And I found this, and I think that sharing this just makes the point that much better. That um, there was the pre-life as a, as a you know non-royal for one, compared to the other, and certainly you didn't hear the queen um, crying out that Megan needs to get a job. She should have a job. So, um, viva la difference. And yeah, Black Queen, they've been trying it. They have been trying it. And I guess the reason why I'm a little more bothered by it now is because ever since the Invictus games, it seems like they have turned up the heat. It seems like they have turned up the heat. And I can understand that it's jarring for them to see the Sussexes having so much success. But after all, uh, Megan is the moment, as evident by that uh, video I just showed you. Megan is the moment. Get used to it. Okay. Dell, I may have missed you speaking on this. I read the royal family was shocked to find out 
what Megan was worth. <laughs> I kind of think they they um <clears throat> I kind of think they probably had an idea. I kind of think so. I'm pretty sure that if there was a meeting planned uh, or whatever, they probably knew in advance. I mean, she was on television, so it shouldn't have been too much of a shock. She had been on the show for seven years. Uh, let's see. Also, why is Kate like an underwear <laughs> wearer? <laughs> uh, you know that was cutting edge. <laughs> you know that was cutting edge. Let's see. For a guy who got a degree in geography, Peggy sure has a hard time finding uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Leg says, is uh, indoctrination? They tell people what they need. Uh, I mean, what tell people that they that they need them. Yes. And yeah, you know, and the patron thing and the honors, all of it is part of inserting themselves in the everyday life of everyone in the country. It's like anything that happens is always looking to the palace for uh, the cue. Carolyn Teal says, Baron, they turn up the heat as the royals are not doing anything. Yeah. Uh, they want to make mediocre, medi I'm sorry, mediocre <laughs> I can't say that happened, but it ain't happening for Mumbles. Well, you all got the claws out today. I love it. Uh, let me see. We make this photo of Megan and Kate trend, please, guys. You know, I've had this for a while. I had this for a while. Maybe I'll put it on Twitter, but I've had this for a while. I don't know how long I had it, but I got so much stuff that I save for when I need it. So, yeah, maybe I'll put it. Well, I got it off of Twitter. I forgot who posted it. Let me see who posted this. Uh, oh, it's a it's a parody account. It's called Kate Kate Middle Kate Middleton. Yeah, Kate Middleton. It's a parody account. That's who posted it. Okay. All right, let's move on. Now, um, Cloud Nugget, you guys are familiar with Cloud Nugget. That is a squatty who has come up with some of the most clever shade. She cried to get rid of her. Now she's taking over her life. Duplicate. <laughs> Duplicate, duplicate, even I'm not that shady. So uh, hats off to Cloud Nugget for this one. Duplicate. So right there it says, good morning, squatties. The Nugget thinks this would be a great idea for a, next, a Netflix series. Duplicate. I agree. I agree. 100. I agree. And of course, I'm not sure if this is a cloud nugget, but I've had this one for a while. Married white female. Kind of like that movie, Single White Female. Well, here you have the other end of it, Married White Female. And as you can see, lurking behind the door is someone wearing the same coat and a turtleneck so that they can look like someone that they are totally obsessed with. Married white female. Now that would be a good movie, like, like the movie Single White Female. So I tell you, there's no lack in creativity amongst the Sussex squad. Now, uh, as you all know, it is Black History Month in the United Kingdom. And I don't want you all to think that I have forgotten about it. I mentioned it the day before, 
the day it started. And of course, by Halloween, Black History Month in the UK will be over with. So we still have time to learn about the contributions of African descent people in the United Kingdom. Now, in the spirit of that, in the spirit of that, let us not forget the way that Catherine ushered in Black History Month last year. Do you guys remember? She went and got a finger wave. <laughs> she went and got a finger wave. I mean, nothing says Black History Month like a good old finger wave. Of course, there's the freeze curl. That's another way to do it. But yeah, yeah. And she came this close to wearing that to Cardiff the other day. She came this close to it. But fortunately, um, the hairdresser uh, couldn't get there in time to set it for her. So, but yeah, there you go. From single white female to just another woman of African descent trying to make it in London. <laughs> Uh, yep, there you go. That is the look. That is the look. If she ever showed up looking like that, I'm not sure how I would respond. I can't be sure. <laughs> so is Kaishanique. Yes, Kaishanique. Yes, Kaishanique. With, with <laughs> Kay Shanique wishes you a very happy uh, Black History Month. And Leg says uh, she set it off, couldn't watch how she moved. <laughs> uh, well, that was last year. Now, the thing is, as you know, Duplicate, duplicate, or um, wait a minute, what was it again? <laughs> Kaishanique, Kaishanique actually, um, and by the way, thank you, Legs, for the super chat. Kaishanique actually got a bit obsessed over um, somebody's uh, braids one year, and as you can see, um, she decided that she was going to try to rock um, some, um, you know, braids. And I think that, um, well, I mean, it's, yes, yes. You see there? there she was at some uh, community center or something, and she was like, hey. And then she could not stop looking. She was just obsessed with this person's hair. And then by the time they saw her again, there she was with her braids. There's like absolutely nobody she will not copy. She copies off of everyone. So maybe I'm being a bit too sensitive about the whole copycat thing. I mean, is is her thing? You know, that's that's her that's her business. She likes to copy people. Um She's a chameleon. You never know what she's going to look like next. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> Let me see here. What? You just had an earthquake? <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Well, make sure you go to, like, they say if it gets really bad, you should, like, lay in the bathtub. Let's see. Shirley Kearney says, hi, Baron. Uh, good podcast. However, talk on Kate Duplicate. Megan uh, needs to not worry. Princess Megan, no, uh, who in, uh, let's see, abuse she is. Duplicate will, uh, will lose, lost everything. Uh, she lost herself. Yeah, she lost her humanity, that's for sure. She lost her humanity. <laughs> okay, let me see here. And of course, not to be outdone, not to be outdone, you know, um, 
I'm not even sure what to say about that one. I'm just going to go to the next one. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so how do you all feel about the AI? I found, just by chance, I found some AIs, and I'm going to share it with you. This one right here, I um, they are very realistic. Now, as I mentioned before, the AI, sometimes they have a problem with hands. So as you can see here, it seems like the fingers on the other hand and the other hand back there is too... It looks weird. It looks weird. I don't know why is it the AI cannot get the hands right. But um, otherwise, it's a pretty picture. I mean, it, it looks so realistic. Cher Brown says... Uh, uh, duplicate wins. Uh, that's the new word for Kate. <laughs> thank you so much for the uh, super chat. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. And then here, that looks very realistic. Uh, uh, I think... I think the angle of the face is not quite right. It almost looks like a Misa and Harriman, but she almost looks like an actress that they found that has a bit of a resemblance to Megan. So yeah, the face is not quite right. Just the angle of it, I think. Um, I don't know. It's something about, I'm not sure. But it's it's not quite right. It's not quite right. Yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I mean, you know, the way the, the photo is formatted and everything, I kind of like it. But um, the face is not quite right. A little weird. A little weird. Uh, which one looks too fat? Uh, this one? Or this one. That one looks too 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 scrawny. Um, this one looks very realistic. Um, I don't even know if that's an AI. That may just be like a cut and paste. That one there just may be a plain old cut and paste. And this is good. This is good. Out of all of them, I have to say this is good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I like it. It don't look so realistic, but it looks good. The freckles are good. Uh, the skin tone is perfect. <clears throat> it looks very real. And then I think I got just one last one. Uh, this one. That one just... Uh... <laughs> Why is the crown all stretched out like that? Um, and now, of course, I can never stop looking to see if they got the fingers right. But um, it looks like there's three different people hoisting the crown on her head. And the crown is not that attractive. The crown almost looks like it's made out of some type of plastic or something. It doesn't look like a real crown. Like like you could stretch it out, like almost like it's a headband. But um, the photo's not so bad. I mean, it's a weird angle look to it, but it's not so bad. It looks it looks realistic. Again, no, the face is too the, the face is not it's the face is too wide or something. But let me see. Uh, even most artists have problems with hands, including the old masters. You know, Lorna, I heard that before. I heard that before. And when I look at some of those old paintings, sometimes the hands do look like a child uh, actually painted them or something. But yeah, I heard that years ago. And it it is true, I believe, that the hands are always a problem. It doesn't seem like it should be, but it is. Okay. And then I think this is the last thing I have, right? Yeah, this is the last thing. Uh, one of the squaddies was nice enough to post a prayer. 
Sunday prayer for Megan, I'm sorry, for Harry and Megan. Lord, you rose victorious on the first day of the week, uh, sanctifying it as a day of celebration. Give Harry and Megan thankful hearts today for your mercies, their victories in the past week, and all the love that surrounds them. Refresh and strengthen them for the week to come and give them the joyful assurance that they are always walking under your protection and life, uh, giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So yeah, that was a nice prayer that someone posted on the interwebs. And you know what? I will let that be our last for today. If you guys have a few additional comments, I will stick around for a bit. Let's see, even the most, oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Um, let me scroll. Oh, good night, Lottie. Well, let me see. 1107, not bad. It must be 1207 on the East Coast and about 5 a.m. in the United Kingdom where Elaine Parker is, right? All right. Okay, you guys, I told you, about an hour today, so we are good. I'm not going to drag it out then. Um, yeah, I was on Spaces for about seven hours yesterday, and I'm starting to feel it, so um, I'm not going to stay long. Had a good time, though, and um, I'm definitely going to have to do that again. Oh, and I co-hosted on Spaces yesterday. Didn't know how to do it. But I kind of learned a bit. And um, yeah, the only thing that I was most afraid of was the trolls. But it was fun. Uh, Roseanne Campbell said, yes, it's 507 here in the UK. Well, hugs to you too. Okay. All right. So have a very productive day for the people uh, in, the, in Europe and Africa and Asia. Have a productive day. Well, Asia, day almost over, ain't it? Uh, <laughs> and for the those of you over in the U.S., have a great tomorrow. All right. So, oh, Anna Boyd, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Okay. All right. So we're good. Okay, and then cheers, of course, to our queens. Where are our queens? There we go. Mama Doria. Uh, and also our queen in heaven. Cheers. Good night, Carmen's Place. Good night, Roseanne Campbell. Or oh, good morning to you. Uh, good night, Lydia Washington. All right, you all, thank you so much. Love you guys. I will see you all tomorrow. And let's close with the Ginger Avenger.